Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include a crisis of European democracy. European Union must do more to help Spain's economy, PM says. 13 ministers urge EU to agree green energy goals in March. And European Union stricter on tobacco products. Plus, the UK set to continue its filibuster of EU general data protection regulation. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. A crisis of European democracy. During November 2012, hundreds of thousands of people across Europe took to the streets. The protests were, by and large, complaining about government policies that increased taxes and lowered government spending. This initially sounds like a familiar story of popular protests against government austerity programmes, but there is a twist to the tale. Many of the people protesting were not aiming their ire at the national governments making the cuts in spending, but rather at the European Union. In Portugal, people carried effigies of their Prime Minister on strings and claimed he was a puppet of the EU. In Greece, people burned the EU flag and shouted EU out. And in Italy, people threw stones at the European Parliament offices. It was, at least for some people on the streets, not the incumbent national politicians in Lisbon, Athens and Rome who were to blame for the problem of the day, but rather politicians and bureaucrats thousands of miles away in Brussels. Well, what a state of hypocrisy. Our political leaders ignore the people, run roughshod over their protests, refuse and in some cases even repeal referendum. How does the EU have the barefaced cheek to call itself democracy? Well, this article investigates. EU must do more to help Spain's economy, its Prime Minister says. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy demanded Monday that the European Union take new measures to complement the efforts made by Spain to emerge from the economic crisis and longest recession in recent history. Rajoy made this request of the EU at the close of the Global Economic Forum held in the northern city of Bilbao. The gathering was attended by International Monetary Fund Chief Christine Lagarde, EU economic officials and executives from Spain's leading companies and financial institutions. The Prime Minister reiterated his message of optimism with regard to the future of the Spanish economy and said that it is already in a phase of recovery that will steadily improve until there is once again a net creation of jobs. Well, this flies in the face of Mariano Rajoy's announcement earlier this week that Spain had gone from fear to hope, from recession to recovery, just as I said at the time. Who is he trying to kid? Thirteen ministers urged the EU to agree green energy goals in March. Thirteen ministers on Monday urged the European Union to reach agreement on the main elements of 2030 environment and energy policy this month, or risk deferring investors and delaying efforts to get a global deal on climate change. Among the rest of the 28 EU member states, the most prominent opposition has come from Poland, which says there is no hurry to reach a political deal. We can work with Poland to get an agreement in March, Britain's Energy and Climate Change Secretary Edward Davy told reporters. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, he said. Well, you can dress this up any which way you like, but at the end of the day, the results will be an increase in energy costs for everyone across Europe. EU is stricter on tobacco products. The tobacco industry has been facing several challenges of late in the form of higher excise tax imposed by governments around the world, declining volume and worldwide anti-tobacco campaigns to curb smoking. 
Last week, it received another blow as the European Parliament imposed stronger rules on manufacture, sale and marketing of the tobacco products. The new European Union Tobacco Products Directive is a revised version of the original Tobacco Products Directive which was issued in 2001. The new rule has banned the sale of flavoured cigarettes and roll-your-own tobacco in EU region. However, other tobacco products such as cigars, cigarillos and smokeless products are exempt from the ban. Moreover, the directive requires the tobacco companies to include both pictorial and text warnings on cigarette packs to dissuade smokers. And the law also requires the warning to cover more than 65% of both the front and back covers. So, if you hear any mention in the UK media that the government is doing anything to legislate on tobacco, just remember where that legislation came from. It is all mandated and directed from Brussels. In a nutshell, we're paying these chumps in Westminster for nothing, and we need them to either do their job or get out of the way and let somebody else do it. UK set to continue its filibuster of EU general data protection regulation. European Union Justice and Home Affairs Ministers will meet in Brussels this week. Top of the agenda will be discussions on reforming EU data protection rules. Vivian Redding, Justice Commissioner, and Cecilia Malmström, Home Affairs Commissioner, will represent the European Commission. And Theresa May, the Home Secretary, and Chris Grayling, Justice Minister, will represent the UK. A memo released Friday by the EC makes it clear that the GDPR, although currently struggling, remains a high priority. EC Vice President Vivian Redding said, I am confident we will be able to build on the momentum injected into the negotiations by the Greek presidency at the last informal council meeting in January. Seeing the latest progress, I will continue working with ministers for an adoption of the data protection reform before the end of this year. Now, let me be very clear about what is going to happen with this data protection legislation, and I quote Vivian Redding in doing so. She said, There will be one rule across all Europe. Now, remember the ratchet mechanism that is explained in our Brave New Europe series. You can find that in the article section of our website. Basically, to repeal any law requires the unanimous approval of all member states. Do you really believe that under such circumstances, either Theresa May or Chris Grayling will be able to negotiate on anything? Well, apart from what wine they'd like to have with their main course, I'm afraid they won't. Now remember, to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news, you can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.